Hi guys, thank you and welcome back. And this is part two of this makeup look right here. So this week we're gonna go in and create finishing up this makeup look, creating this eye makeup look right in here. Also the lips and everything else is gonna be more like a really fresh, neutral, clean feline makeup look. And for the part one, if you haven't seen the last part before this video, it's going to be the review for the Makeup Forever, Forever Ultra HD skin. If you want to see the whole review of how I feel about this complexion, this new line of foundations that Makeup Forever just came out with, watch that video. I'm going to link the, that video right down below. But if you're all interested to create this eye makeup look, the skin, the lips, let's go in and start part two and complete this whole makeup look. Okay, so let's start or should I say continue with this makeup look. So for the complexion, I already did a complexion video separately in my previous video. I'm going to leave the link right down below using the Ultra HD Skin Foundation from Makeup Forever. So I have a full review on that uh, on my previous video. So if you want to see the whole full detail how I did this complexions please watch the previous video for this continue video we're gonna go in with a little bit more detail with the eye and lips and to finishing up this makeup look and just to start out I'm gonna go ahead and go with baking so with the baking I'm gonna go in with a little bit mix with Laura Mercier a little bit of the banana powder from Ben Nye and I think there's a camo powder also from Ben Nye so all of that going to be mixed together so this step is totally optional and while my baking is doing this magic I'm just going to go in with the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush matte bronzer to warm up my complexion just a little bit more so I love to warm up my complexion while I'm baking because something about during your baking process everything just kind of like blend in a little bit more better also, I'm totally obsessed with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Matte Bronzer because this bronzer doesn't have like a lot of pigments, so it's super, super easy to blend. Also, I'm using an e.l.f. blush brush. I am also obsessed with this brush. I have one for like my travel to use for blotting. Also, it's one of my favorite brush to use for bronzer. And just to give my cheek a little bit more push and a sharper edge, I'm just going to go in with the one side powder puff. I'm totally obsessed with this powder puff also because he created with a straight edge for you to kind of like give you that perfect bake under your cheek. To add in a little bit more definition for my nose contour, I'm going to go in with this dual backstage contouring palette. So I'm using the second highlight deep. That's what it's called. It's like the second lightest shade. Uh, so you so you can totally using the bronzer as this warming up nose contouring also but I'm just feeling like the duo backstage contouring palette this shade is kind of like a perfect shade for nose contouring because it's not as dark as the Charlotte Tilbury powder so I'm just gonna go ahead and go in with more like an angle brush and really precisely um, contouring my nose just carving out that perfect line adding a little bit more bronzer a little bit more definition and dimension as I say earlier how I like to put on blush while I do baking because this step is kind of like help blending out everything kind of perfectly while you do your baking uh, so once you dust off your baking everything gonna be blending into each other seamlessly so the blush palette I'm using is the KKW blush palette classic matte and I know this is no longer on the website because the website is currently down but you can totally use any other color peachy color that is kind of like similar and matte and based on the interview I recently saw with Kim Kardashian she said that the reason why she take down the website is not because she want to take out the west but because she wanted to combine every single of her website together so you don't have to jump from like KKW Beauty, KKW Fragrance and something else with all in its, their own separate website so she just want to take it down and put everything into like one so maybe this palette gonna be on the website again once she revamped the whole site and now to prep my eye before I put it on my eyeshadow. So this makeup look going to be really clean. So I'm trying to keep my eyelid as clean as possible. So I'm going to go in with the makeup by Mario Master Eye Prep and Set. So this is going to help kind of like clearing out on my 
stain on my redness on my eyelid then can give me like more like clean slate for my eyeshadow to go on a little bit more later also that's gonna help my eyeshadow last a little bit more longer throughout the day now to set the eyelid i'm gonna go in with the charlotte tilbury airbrush flawless finish setting powder i like to use this one because it does have a slight tint to it also it's really good to set your eyelid the makeup by mario does have a setting powder on this eyelid prep but i feel like that's just a little bit too white for my eyelids i'm just gonna go in with the charlotte tilbury the eyeshadow the eyeshadow palette I'm going to use today is going to be the Artist Couture Supreme Nude Eyeshadow Palette. I love this palette because it does have a lot of good neutral shade. I did also do a review of this palette before so I'm going to leave a link right down below. Also click on the tag if you want to check out that video right after this video. So the first color I'm going to go in is the color Exposed. It is a little bit more like a wider shade so I'm just going to apply this right on my lit areas because i want that lit area but to be a little bit more brighter than the rest and then the next color i'm gonna go in is a little bit more tanner called the color con do this this have just a little bit more like a skin tonish shade a little bit more darker a little bit more browner just gonna crest that gonna be right onto my socket line so i'm just gonna use a makeup by mario soft brush at this i'm gonna go more like a windshield wiping motion back and forth, back and forth. And really nestle that nudist color right into my socket line. And then go to go in with a clean brush to really buff out and blending out all that edges. Now using this small fluffy brush from Aerial Makeup Brush, I'm going to dip that into this pink peachy color right into my socket line so i feel like if you're going for more like a natural makeup look just bring your blush into your eye makeup that's going to create more like a perfect flawless transition shade so i'm just going to nestle that shade right into my socket line just to warm up and give it a little bit more like a pinkish natural eyelid pinkish tone now going back to the artist couture supreme new eyeshadow palette using this flat side of the makeup by mario brush I'm gonna dip that brush into the color Expose, the lighter color. So I'm kind of go into kind of like cut crease, but not really cut crease, but it's really a cut crease because I feel like a cut crease with a concealer or something right now gonna be a little bit too intense for this natural makeup look, but I still want that area to be a little bit more brighter. So I'm just gonna go straight in with a flat brush and a lighter shade to kind of like put in the same area when I normally gonna use a concealer to cut the crease. Does that make sense? And then I'm gonna go in with a fluffier brush to kind of like merge everything together. And now using this little flat brush, I'm just gonna dip that brush into the color Nudist. So whatever color I use my, on my top lid, I'm gonna use the same color on my bottom lid to kind of like smoke it out a little bit. So one of the tricks is if you have a little bit more like a puffier under eye when you like wake up in the morning or whatever it is put a little bit more like a brown and nudist shadow underneath so it's gonna give you an illusion of not being so puffy so try it out and let me know how it is and now to go in with tight line and create a wing i'm gonna go in with my favorite angle brush that's gonna be the scott barn angle brush i am totally obsessed with this brush because the shape of it is very unique it's not like directly straight it's have a little bit of like a swoop to it to give your lash line a little bit more like easy to control and with that brush i'm gonna go in with the color minx from the artist couture palette and the easiest way to create a tight line is just go in very patiently one line at a time just go really short line just go doop 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 Tube. and you can always go back and touch up on it a little bit more later so once you finish with all your tight lining then at the end you're just gonna kind of like connecting to create a wing it's, you can see from like the corner of your eye into like the corner of your brow so that is kind of like where you want to aim it's just going for more like a straight flick that directions it's gonna take you a little bit of like a practice but once you get it, it's gonna be super easy to do. And now using a brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and dust off all the baking on my forehead, my chin, under my cheek. And then I'm gonna actually leave my under eye on for a little bit more longer while I'm in the middle of doing my brows. So then I'm gonna, just gonna go in with a little bit more like a disposable spoolie to kind of like prep my brows and brush it upward and make everything stand where it's supposed to be before I go in to do my brows. 
Okay, so now for the brows. Normally I do the brows off camera because I don't think it's that interesting. But this is my normal brows routine. So the brow product I normally use is from the Sephora Retractable Brows Pencil. I totally love this one because it's have a little bit more like a precision tip rather than more like a big angle. I feel like that is a little bit harder to do. Since this is more like a pencil tip, I can get a little bit more detail into my brows. So so first I like to start out from the bottom of my brows because I want to feel that line in a little bit more like a straighter line. So I also got my brows microbladed like a few months ago and I totally love them so now I don't really have to do as much to my brows. Before that fuller makeup brows, I'm going to go in and fill in those like bald spot or a little bit more like empty area with a smaller flick or a smaller stroke using the end of the spoolie to kind of like blend everything out and then i think you probably heard this like uh, many many times but both of my brows are like not really identical because one of my brows muscles tend to be a little bit more stronger than my left my other side my right side tend to be a little bit more stronger so sometimes i do lift my right brows a little bit more higher but brows is always sisters they're never gonna be like twins so try your best to match them as good as possible so they never pretty gonna match up like ever I don't think even though I try as hard as I can to like match them they like never twins and since this eye makeup look gonna be really quick and easy and clean I'm gonna go in with the Shishido Lash Curler to curl up my lash and for the mascara I'm gonna go in with the cult favorite Too Faced Better Than Sex Volumizing Mascara I am 50-50 love and hate with this mascara because it does give you that really full, plum and voluming lashes but also when it's dried out, the wand does get a little more like a clumsy look but to remedy that, you can just get a paper towel and wipe the wand clean and then it's gonna give you that really full and plum separated lash once again but I'm also in a market to try other new lash products so if you have one the recommendations please leave down it right in the comments i would love to try them i've been trying to think a lot of like different mascara but i never like fall in love with like any other one besides like Too Faced or the Dior mascara now just to finishing up the complexions i'm gonna go in with the sephora micro smooth big face powder and the color i'm using is in number 30 medium so what micro big smooth powder does is kind of like evening out your complexions it does have a slight tint depends on which color you are choosing so number 30 is the closest to my skin tone and since the micro smooth bake finish it doesn't have a lot of like pigment or uh, so heavy you can use it as like a finishing powder and what finishing powder is is kind of like that sheer sheen right on top of your complexions I'm using more like a fluffier brush in my buffing motion so what this does is kind of like filling it in on my pores to create that more like an airbrush flawless effects it's kind of like think of it like if you're doing your eyeshadow and it's that blending color so that's what this uh smooth finish big powder finishing powder really does is think of it as like a blending powder for your whole complexion that blend your uh, contouring your skin tone your blushes highlight whatever and kind of like merge them all into kind of like one layer just think of it like that and if you're using more like a buffing in circle of motion it's gonna fill in on your pores create that really flawless airbrush even now finish skin texture another one of my favorite finishing powder is actually from the bobby brown nude finish illuminating powder what's different between this one and the sephora one is the bobby brown does have a little bit of luminosity it does have a little bit of like a shimmering pigment in it so gonna give you that more like a dewy glow effect the sephora have a little bit more like a matte effect and the bobby brown have a little bit more illuminating effect and now for highlighter i'm gonna go in with using one of my favorite originally is the becca champagne pop but they sold it to smashbox so you can now find this highlighter in smashbox shimmering skin perfecting highlighter called champagne pop it is so sad to hear that there's no more becca brand since estee lauder her the mother brand is 
practically closing down Becca Cosmetics. So there is no more Becca Cosmetics. It's so sad. But this highlighter is super good. Another favorite of mine from Becca was the Opal one, and I never be able to find like, another one again. If you happen to have seen it, I want it. <laughs> also, I'm using a fluffy brush right under my brows to give my brows a little bit more of a pop and also on the bridge of my nose and a little, a little bit on the tip of my nose at the same time. So put the highlighter wherever you want. Mostly I'm also going to put on the cupid's bow of my lips before I put on my lip liner and lipsticks. To also add in a little bit of shimmer to my eyelid, I'm going to go in with this Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. The palette is the number 2 Coglet. And then I'm going to dip my little fluffy flat brush into this pinkish shimmering color called Glitter Stroke Pink Gold. So the reason why I'm using this palette for my eyelid is because it does have a little bit more like a larger shimmering pigment and I want my eyelid to look a little bit more like have that really wet effect but not so like wet or dewy like you're putting a gloss it's just having that like bigger chunk of glitter pigment rather than putting on like a hot a regular regular highlighter like the champagne pop it would not pop as much like this one so i'm just gonna go in with the backstage glows palette i've been using this palette as like my eyelid glowing color a lot and sometimes you can also use this for your highlighter i just find that the chunky glitter in this is a little bit too big as a highlight because you can actually see the glitter so I think it just be perfect for the eyelid area and with a Scott Barn Precision brush I'm going to dip my brush into the color bronze on the same palette I'm going to really nestle that back and forth right into my crease line because this does have a little bit more like a lighter shimmer and I want to have that really glowy lit effect so I'm going to add a little bit glowy bronzing shimmer into right into the socket of my eyelid and it's not so matte so it's having that really dewy natural glowy effect to it and then with a clean fluff fluffier brush I'm just gonna go ahead and merge everything together and blend everything out and just to finishing up the eye makeup I'm gonna go in to reinforce everything for the second time that's including going back to the makeup by Mario Matte Master Matte Eyeshadow Palette with the darkest blacks. I'm going to go ahead and once again tight line that line because sometimes when you dusting off all your makeup using all the finishing powder, the line does fade a little bit. So now I'm just going to go ahead and reinforce everything once again, include the liner, the wing liner, the eye pigment, also a little bit of the shading on my eye to make everything to pop a little bit more and I think once you kind of reinforce it the second time it's gonna last longer throughout the day also and since I do have an Asian straight lashes I do need to curl my lashes second time also and do a second coat of mascara and that's gonna be the Too Faced Better and Sex Mascara I always feel that it's gonna give you a little bit more longer and more voluming the second time around so if you have a little bit more straighter lash put on your mascara the first time and then wait for it to dry and put on the second coat and now to brighten up my eye a little bit more I'm gonna go in with the makeup by Mario Master Matte Brightening Eye Pencil so this step is totally optional but remember back in the day when we watched American Next Top Model and Tyra say you can put the white liner into your waterline and make your eye look a little bit more bigger well this is like the same but the color is not so white it's a little bit more like a skin tone so everything looks definitely a little bit more natural rather than just that white line in your waterline so all you have to do is just give it really good sharpen and put the color right into your waterline I know it's look a little bit more scary but once you get used to it it's not that bad and now for the lips, I'm going to go in first with the Marc Jacob Outliner Longwear Lip Pencil and the color I'm using is the color Nude-ish. And because I want this whole makeup look to be a little bit more clean and neutral since it's for a passport photo, I don't want anything too vibrant or too popping, definitely not a red lipstick. So I want something definitely a little bit more like toned down, a little bit more nude and neutral all over so this i feel like this color is like a perfect shade for my 
lips to kind of like tone it down a little bit. So first I'm just going to go ahead and definitely overline my top lips and then definitely overline a little bit on my bottom lips also. And now to stay with that nude vibe, I'm going to go in with the Charlotte Tilbury K-I-S-S-I-N-G lipstick in nude K. So this lipstick is going to be perfect uh, match with the lip liner from Marc Jacob. It's going to be give you that more like a toned down, really 90s super, supermodel nude color. I mean, it's called Nude K. It's one of my favorite nude color. And of course, I don't want to be too opaque of the lipstick. And the best way to do that is use your fingers to dab a little bit on your lipstick and just blot it on your lips. And this way, going to give you that really clean and sheer layer of lipstick rather than go straight on with the lipstick is going to be a little bit too opaque for me so this way it's going to be perfect and now just to add in just a touch of pink to it i'm going to go in with the charlotte tilbury matte revolution lipstick the color my all-time favorite color is going to be pillow talk so i actually used this color on my wedding day i feel it's the perfect bridal clean nude every day because this color is kind of like match with your natural lip color so this color will be perfect and it's going to be toned down a little bit from the nude k color and this color combination is perfect so we're just about to finish up the makeup i just want to bring out my under eye brightness a little bit more so i'm going to go in with a mac studio fix nc20 and because this have a little bit more brighter tone it's going to help me bring out all that brightness back into my complexions especially on my under eye my forehead and my chin and now to add in a little bit of blush to bring everything together i've been obsessed with this fenty beauty killer wash duo highlighter blush situation going on the color i'm using is in the girl next door also cheek freak i've been obsessed with this one because it's half kind of like a combination between blush and highlighter so it's gonna give you that really dewy glowy yummy cheek color it's not so matte it's have a little bit more like a shimmer also i love how it does have a little bit more like a pinkish tone now just to finish everything up i'm gonna go in to finish this makeup with the fancy beauty dew makeup refreshing spray so this does have really nice scent to it also gonna give you that really glow and dewy effect and also set your makeup at the same time and it's definitely not gonna dry all skin out like majority of other setting spray i am totally obsessed with this setting spray i bought like 10 different bottle and save it into my closet and to clean up any dust on makeup on my brows i'm gonna go in with the anastasia beverly hills stronghold clear brows gel so this is also gonna help my brows stand up where they're supposed to be because sometimes my brows Hair does get a little bit too long and then it's just everywhere. So this brow gel is going to kind of like a spray to help hold everything together. And then for this makeup look, I decided to put on a little bit of lashes. And I don't use lashes a lot, but the lash I usually go for are these type of lashes. Sometimes American lash does get a little bit too long, too bushy. So I'm not sure which like Asian brand this lash is, but this is the type of lash I normally wear if I do wear them. And also I hate to wear a whole strip of lashes. Normally I just cut them in half and put them on the tail end of my eye to give me that little bit more like a push of that cat eye look because I feel like it's a little bit too uncomfortable for me to wear the whole strip lash. It's just weird and heavy for my eyelashes. And my eyelashes also look really strong or straight. I mean not straight, long already. So I don't really need a lot. But for this makeup look, I just need a little bit of push for that camera for the perfect uh, passport photo and you can tell a huge difference between the side that have lashes and the other side that don't and the lash glue I'm using is the Avalua lash adhesive I normally go for more like a black adhesive because sometimes it's uh, kind of like merge into your waterline at the same time something the clear one does dry it out a little bit more like white or you can actually see the glue once it's dried out if the glue is white so i tend to go for a little bit more like a black adhesive it's just a little bit more perfect and easier to maintenance and then of course one of the steps you can definitely can't forget is to go in and retight line your lash line once you put on your lashes because sometimes your lash line and your tight liner doesn't match up so you definitely want to be give it a little bit more like a seamless seam once you like blink you don't see that lash line anywhere so just go back in for that little minute and put in a 
quick like touch up by your timeline to make everything a little bit more seamless so you definitely don't get to see that uh, lash that you just put in okay guys so this is gonna be the final finished makeup look for this makeup if you haven't watched the last video it's gonna be the full review of how i feel about the makeup forever ultra hd skin foundation so if you haven't watched that one too watch that one because it's gonna be the beginning of this makeup full look with the complexion but this is gonna be the final makeup look with the eye and the lips so it's just this week we're gonna go in with a little bit more like go to do taking passport photos all of that so i'm trying to go something a little bit more like clean neutral still sexy still cat eye like but still like neutral i don't want to be a little bit too glowy because sometimes when you're going to like take a flash photography at, at like dmv or like passport photo trying to give you lip get your skin a little bit more like matte finish because the lights bounce your skin and it's gonna give you a little bit more like, like if you get your skin too oily or too highlighted it's gonna look a little bit weird in the passport or dmv photo so trying to get a little bit more matte skin so that's what we're kind of like going for today not so glowy but it's a little bit more like neutral civilized makeup look so yeah so that's gonna be the final makeup look if you haven't watched this video go watch that one and that is gonna be the final look for this week i kind of running late for this makeup look right now we have to go take my passport photo also i have to record another video after this i recording like freaking four video this week not this week today so yeah so if you happen to like this makeup look right in here, any of the products I try on this makeup for this makeup look, do leave me a comment right down below. And I know I haven't been doing a lot of like video lately because we have a little bit of construction at the house and they've been banging and drilling for like the past two months and I couldn't record anything because each time we record they start drilling again so I was just waiting for them to finish reconstruction at the kitchen because we have like water damage or whatever. It's finally done now, so we're gonna go start go doing the video again. But yeah, that's about it. So if you happen to like this makeup look right in here, don't forget to leave a comment and you know what to do. Like, subscribe, ring the bell button, follow me on Instagram at bella.c.snow and that's about it. I'll see you again in my next video. Okay, bye. Sing me back to life. Singing this sweet My hair is giving it today and a lot of people have been asking how I do my hair to get it really like curly and fluffy well majority I just put a little bit of like hairspray on it tie in like a bun and then leave it for the whole day and let it out and that's what happens so I don't really use like hot tool a lot even though I just got like the Dyson I want to do a review on that Dyson are you interested in doing that review leave a comment right down below but that's practically all I did I just tie it in like a high bun and let it down and that's what my hair look like after I t let out the bun so I guess that's my hair tricks yeah it's not nothing special about it but 